In the past several years, the Space Coast community has watched the smaller Brevard Community College blossom into what has become Eastern Florida State College. Today, the man at the helm of the EFSC Titan ship is in the studio. Welcome to Florida Today's Eye on Brevard. I'm Rob Landers. Dr. Jim Ritchie is in with my counterpart, Isadora Rangel, to talk about the push to keep tuition low and affordable for the community, the ongoing building boom, and the emphasis on creating a culture where titans truly do rise. Dr. Ritchie, thank you for being on the show. Thank you, thank you for inviting me. Glad to be here. Sure. Let's start with uh, the review that you got from your board of trustees um, sure. that was for 2017. Give us the highlights of that review. Well, once a year, uh, the board does a review of my performance. Uh, it's statutorily based, and uh, I find it to be an extremely valuable uh, tool, uh, albeit it is public, uh, so you get a good chance to see kind of where you're at. Um, the board was very happy, near as I could tell, the, uh, the results of the, of the uh, performance review uh, that they written down and what they said publicly were very positive. Uh, they highlighted, one of the things they highlighted was our gold rating that we got last year for the first time in our history. There is uh, 28 institutions in the Florida college system, and in the gold rating there are seven, and we finish in the top three of, of that. So and how we're very is that pleased. measured? It's measured, I, I like it a lot because it's, it's measured objectively. It's measured based on uh, actual uh, uh, retention of, of students. A student comes to the college, are we able to retain them for another year, in the year after hopefully, until they graduate? So that's a very important metric. Another metric is uh, our graduation rates. So within a certain period of time, are you, are you graduating a high number of folks? And of course, we want to do that. That's, that's, a, that's part of our mission, obviously. There's other ones as well. Are they going on and getting further education? Are they getting jobs? And if they are, what are their wages? How do their wages compare to other, other sectors of, of society that don't have these uh, degrees? So uh, we scored for the first time in our history uh, the gold rating. And uh, previous to that, we'd been in the silver rating, which is still pretty good. The gold rating was really something special. Huge uh, kudos to my staff, faculty is unbelievable, community support, and let's be honest, our students are working really hard. I, I, love, to, I love to get on campus, I love to go to the, the learning labs and some of the, some of the classrooms and interact with them. I mean, you get pretty fired up seeing how, how hard our students are working. So what is your graduation rate today? Our graduation rate is one of the tops in the state, we're around the 50% uh, mm -hmm. ra uh, graduation rate. Uh, nationally, that, that rate's probably somewhere in the 20% range. So. Uh, one of the first things when I was hired was these were some of the things we talked about that we wanted to do, and uh, we've been able to we've been able to do well, but of course we always want to be higher. Yeah. You know, we could be higher than six, fifty if and, we go. And what are the challenges with uh, state colleges? Obviously, you have students who work full time a lot of times and minority students. What are the challenges in retaining them and making sure they graduate in time? And what has the college done to improve its graduation rate? I think the challenges, uh, again, are, are, like you say, they've got a lot of stresses in their lives. They've got children. They're working one and two jobs, and they're trying to go to college at the same time. So it's a very, it's a very difficult task. One of the things that we've, that we've done recently that we didn't do in the past to help in that regard is when they come to us, we have advisors, and we've always had advisors, but we have advisors that are dedicated specifically to that person. And they're not just for the first semester. That advisor for a first time at college student will stay there throughout, will be their advisor throughout the whole process. Now, not a lot of people are doing that, and that's hard to do, but we've decided that's a very important thing to do, and we're already seeing some good results. And what happens then is that that student stays connected to the college through their advisor, but that, that team is also connected to the, the faculty, connected to other staff, connected to the, uh, the uh, academic uh, tutoring sessions that, the, that are, are posed, you know, potentially by the faculty and whatnot. So as a whole, I think if our students stay connected to the college, and we as a college stay connected to each other, we're going to see some really good results, and we're already starting to see that. And I think I imagine one of the things that, that has a huge impact on that is the cost of tuition. And for the sixth year in a row, there have been, there have been no increases to tuition. Correct. How did, you get, how did you manage the math to make that happen? Well, here's what we do. I, and I've, I'm a, obviously a huge proponent of that. That doesn't happen by accident. Uh, and that's one of the first things I talked about is, is the affordability of college. If people cannot afford to be here, how are they going to get an education? How are they going to advance themselves? It's not going to happen. So in and of itself, that's, that's one of the premier things that we need to look at and work on. And so what we've done is we build the budget. We start with that fact. We're not going to raise tuition. Now let's build the rest of the budget. Mm -hmm. We start with that fact. And I'll tell you the reason it's actually worked is that, as you know, over these past number of years, I've been president for six years. 
starting my seventh year, uh, we've created somewhere in the range of 45 new programs. Well, those new programs are attracting people that otherwise would not have been to the college. And of course, there's resources associated with that as well. So that's helped offset the fact that we haven't, we've given raises and whatnot, but we haven't you know, raise the tuition. Mm -hmm. so. And one of the things you told your board this month was not to give you a raise in addition to the 3% already stipulated in your contract, right? Um, can you explain that decision? One of the things you brought up was uh, the ongoing staff salary negotiations and uh, more than $2 million in cuts by the legislature to your, your budget. So uh, by way of background a little bit, uh, last year, before the, uh, our year starts in July, right? So last year, the legislature Unfortunately for the Florida college system, we experienced a $30 million cut to our to the, the statewide, system, statewide yeah. budget. Our share was about $2.2 .2 million, which is significant. That's a significant amount of money. Now prior to that, virtually every year, of course, the faculty are, are, are unionized, so we have a collective bargaining arrangement with them. We, we do the things we're supposed to do along those lines. And they generally have a three-year contract with us. So their their raises had been negotiated in, in past years so they they were they're fortunate for them and that you know that 2.5 percent for them was in there now the faculty on the other or the staff on the other hand we usually do some sort of either staff raise or a cost of living payment um, of you know thousand dollars per person or whatever it happens to be so last year we weren't able to do any of that and to me before we talk about any you know anything to do with May I wanted to make sure that, that we, because we're gold rated, we, we work hard, the faculty and staff are, make it, are getting it done. They make us all look great. So let's just make sure, let's get those folks taken care of. And then the timing of it is the legislative session, as you know, is ongoing right now. It's coming to a close, hopefully in the next few weeks, but of course we never know exactly how that'll work. Um, but that, that's presumably in March. Uh, that's going to be. How is, the, how is the state college budget looking like? Is there, are you expecting more cuts? We're not expecting more cuts, um, but as you know, until they go to conference and until yeah. it's all said and done, and things can change in the last minute. I've been there. <laughs> yeah, I know. They, yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> they come out of a room and they, you know, right. everything changes. So we're not expecting cuts, uh, but I don't think we're expecting any huge increases. But at least if we could, let's restore ourselves to where we were the year before. Let's let's make sure that the folks that are that are getting things done for us are are rewarded and, and, and you know treated extremely fairly. And then, if they want to talk about me in some regard, that's fine. I'm, that, that's how I believe we should move forward. And uh, well, uh, the superintendent of, of Brevard Schools, Desmond Black, Blackburn, actually donated a raise he received. There was a lot of controversy because the school district was in negotiations with the teachers' unions for teacher raises. Right. Did that play into your decision at all? No, or? no, not just just exactly what I had just said. Mm -hmm. And I think that's we just need to take care of all our folks first before we talk about yeah. me in any something. So, so let's talk a little bit about the legislature. I mean, I. I, I I've seen a trend in recent years, especially in the, Flor in the Florida Senate, of boosting state universities. At the same time, I believe a lot of state colleges feel sort of under attack, uh, especially there is a bill that was kind of vetoed last year by right. Governor Scott, and there's a similar version back this year. Right. I think one of the most controversial provisions is that it caps the number of bachelor's degrees right. at state colleges at 20% right. of the student body. Right. Um, the other thing that is also very controversial is that it links college perform performance funds to the number of full-time students and it also creates a board of community colleges. Are your thoughts about this bill and how would it impact Eastern Florida? Well, I think uh, the term, the, the part about, you know, capping uh, baccalaureate enrollment, uh, to me, uh, will, will have a negative effect on us. Um, we've had baccalaureates now for probably three or four years, somewhere in that range. Uh, and today, we're somewhere in the range of probably 10% of our enrollment is that right now. So it wouldn't be hard to believe that in the next number of years that that enrollment would grow. Okay? Would grow to 20% or more. And it grows not because the college administration sits back and says, hey, let's, let's create another program so we can get more, more people. That's not, that's not how it happens. It happens just the opposite. We talk, we survey our, our community, uh, we survey our businesses, uh, we have them on advisories committee. These programs are driven by the community. They tell us hey, listen, this, have you guys considered this? And what would that look like? So then we'll take it and we'll run with it a little bit more and more. But So I think that as this dynamic community in particular, Brevard in our area, I mean, we see what's happening uh, from an economic perspective. We have to be able to be nimble and have the ability to, to do the types of degrees, including baccalaureate degrees, that are going to benefit those employers that want to come here or are already here. So the 20%, um, I think, would be problematic 
specifically for us. Uh, other colleges maybe wouldn't affect as much, but this county I'm so excited about is growing uh, with some really good opportunities, and we're going to be directly involved in fueling that from a, from a uh, labor perspective. Mm -hmm. And I want to go back to bachelor's degrees, but uh, another provision in the bill is this tying performance funding to the number of full-time students. Is that an issue when we're dealing with state colleges where you have students that well, might I think it's even I think it's even more egregious than that. It's not tying necessarily to, to full-time students. It's full-time students that then go on to another university, and how they perform at another university, they're impacting our funding. Now that doesn't seem to make oh, wow. to, that doesn't seem to be real fair to us because once they leave us, we don't we don't have an ability to to uh, impact their output and whether they graduate and all those types of things. So we shouldn't be you know, and it's not just performance rewards. There's you know we have to contribute money into it. We can potentially lose money in this performance funding as well. So that's one part of it that I'm certainly not comfortable with. Yeah, have you been lobbying against this bill and the lawmaker sponsoring the bill, who represents Brevard County, right. Dorothy Huco? Have right. you had conversations with her? About Absolutely. It? And what have you told her? And what has she told well, you? Well, listen. Uh, here's what we do: we we educate anyone we deal with, whether it's whether it's any senator or any any house member. We invite them to our campus. We show them what we're what we're doing, what we're what, what things are about, and ultimately it's their decision in terms of what they decide to move forward. But they certainly have been informed and see what what we're all about. Yeah. And let's talk about bachelor's degrees. Uh, a few years ago, state colleges were known as community colleges, right. and there was a switch around 2011. Can you? Give me a little bit of, of the college's history and how it has switched from just provide just providing um, associate's degree to bachelor's. How many bachelor's degrees do you have today? Okay. So a little bit. Uh, I was hired. Uh, I was interviewed in late 2011, and I was selected in I think in January 2012. You know, one of the things we talked about in, in a potential strategic plan that I threw out there. And if you'd have been around uh, a number of years ago, it went on for hours and hours and hours. I did a lot of talking, similar to today. <laughs> And uh, I, have to, I have to say, it was very, I was very detailed in the types of things we were talking about. One area of that, one major area is we want, you know, I wanted, we want, we want our, our students to be the most highly sought after when it comes time to get a job. Now, whether that's after a year, you know, 10 months, two years, or whatever it happens to be, that's very, very important, okay? So... To that end, you have to say, okay, well, what are the job opportunities out there? And that's why we created a lot of the certificate programs, a lot of the associate's degree programs we've created. But it's also why the baccalaureate uh, degrees came to being, because our community said, listen, we have people at lower levels of management here that have two-year degrees, and they're phenomenal employees, and they're very skilled because the AES degree holders are very skilled people. They, don't have, they haven't had the management experience or the management training that ostensibly happens in the, the baccalaureate programs. There are a lot of more management type things. So, so it was a win-win. You have your employer saying locally, you know, they have, they have the technical skills we're looking for, but couldn't you have a bachelor's degree where they gain the other parts of the skills, the leadership skills, et cetera, that they would need for that employee to stay right here and, and continue on? So again, they say, well, why couldn't the universities do that? The universities could do that, but a lot of these folks, as we said, yeah. are place bound. They're, they're here, they're working. They have a family. They're doing, they're doing really well. But they need that extra, that extra uh, uh, push. So, at this point, we have you know, fifteen, sixteen hundred students in these programs, uh, across probably nineteen or eighteen or nineteen uh, different tracks. The majority of which are are well, actually the sp spread across three areas. One of which is our business areas. Another is uh, technology related. The other one is healthcare related. So, uh, that's kind of where where it came from yeah. and, and kind of where we are today. What is your most popular bachelor's program? The most popular one is the one we created first, which I'm happy to say, <laughs> kind of my idea on that one, is, uh, is, a, is an organizational management, just a general business bachelor degree. Oh. And that's by far the most popular. And so that's, that's basically any business person uh, that has an employee like we described, and they say, hey, listen, why don't you get your bachelor degree? Well, instead of having all kinds of specific, specific tracks, it's, it, it applies to just about any kind of business, so that, that's why it's most. And popular. you recently added a new program, right? I believe last time we t we talked a few months ago. Which one? We've we've added. We've what added was a, the last one you added? Actually, the very last one we added was a uh, a bachelor's of uh, nursing, uh, that was approved uh, by the uh, by the state board in July of last year, and we literally began uh, in January, just you know a few weeks ago, and within days of advertising it. I mean, within hours, the, to be more specific, I mean, the classes are filled up. So we're, yeah. I mean, it's, there's so, the, all these areas, these baccalaureate are, are workforce driven. So there's a need 
for these folks to get out in that community and, and earn some money and to have the, the businesses have those folks. So nursing is a perfect example. And any new degrees in the works that you can talk about at this point? No, not necessarily. You know, we're trying to catch our breath a little bit, I think. We've, we've, I mean, I don't think anybody across the Florida college system has created the kinds of uh, opportunities that we have. And, and I use that word opportunities because I think that kind of defines a lot about the college, and from my perspective anyway. Um, you know, we have athletics. We have, you know, uh, you know, all the arts. We have a lot of different things that are going on at the college. And really, it's, it's all a function of more opportunities for our students to feel connected, to gain additional skills, uh, and to, to want to be at Eastern Florida State College and want to stay in our community and, and thrive and raise our families here. Mm -hmm. And uh, I want to move on to the, um, the construction boom that you have experienced. But before, um, in light of the recent school shooting in Broward right. County, I think a lot of parents and students are wondering what, what is Eastern Florida doing uh, to prepare itself in case of an active shooter situation what has been done in recent years well, well first off our you know it just happened within hours ago and uh, our hearts and, and prayers go out to the families affected uh, it's a horrific situation clearly in, in South Florida and uh, again we, we're, we're thinking about them all the time I have to say from Eastern Florida's perspective this is a topic that was a priority literally from day one of, of me becoming president not based on any one incident or anything like that but recognizing that the safety of our students, our staff, our faculty, and we have all kinds of visitors, as, as you've been, I'm sure, on our campuses yeah. constantly, that is the, of the utmost importance to me and, and to the Board of Trustees and to our administration, clearly. So, so in order to do that, sort of think about that, you know, we've got to, you've got to really have a plan. And so we've had a plan from a long time ago, which involves, you know, one aspect of that plan is, is having tremendous people run those types of areas that are highly knowledgeable in those types of matters. One example would be, you know, we hired uh, Jack Parker, former sheriff, as a vice president at the college. And of course, he has tremendous experience in those types of things. And we've had other infrastructure in terms of people as well. But we go way beyond the leadership. We go to the, you know, we've added so many uh, uh, security personnel, uh, other resources, uh, the training we've done. With, uh, with folks at the college, we invite them to train all the time, and they take advantage of it, they come. Have you done a specific active shooter training? Yes, we, we do that pretty routinely, absolutely. So I feel, you know, and my responsibility is, is to, for the safety of folks, we have taken it extremely seriously, and we've put our money behind wh those initiatives, and I feel like we're in as good a position as we're gonna be in, uh, it, it, should that, you know, that, that sort of thing happen. And it just hits so close to home. It's only three hours away. It feels a lot more real than when it happened in Las Vegas, as tragic right. as those were. Um, have you heard anything from your students and parents concerned about what happens when I go to school? I, I think I can tell you that I've not heard anything specifically on, on that from, from our folks here, but I can tell you that I know from the feedback I've gotten over these last months and years that our faculty, staff, and students, they feel so much more, because they see the presence. They see the types of things we're doing from a security perspective. They know it's a vast, a vast improvement. And I'm just talking from their perspective, not, not from mine. I'm, I hear from folks saying, we're so happy you guys have moved in this direction in a big way. It's extremely important, let's be honest. And so uh, that gives me, we can always do better, and we'll always look to do better in everything, including security. But we have moved the ball significantly forward, I, I believe. And speaking of campus, um you, you're planning on, for, on your first student dormitories that will open, they're expected to open in, f in to, uh, 2019. Uh, can you explain the need for dorms and where, how did that come about? How that came about is like anything else that goes on at the college. Uh, one, one of the things we decided, or I decided many, many years ago when I became president, I said, hey, we need to be more connected to our community, to our students, to, to everybody. And in the old days, we didn't really survey people very much. We didn't really, it was just kind of, hey, we think we know what we're going to do. And I said, that's, I don't want to do that. What I want to do is I want to hear constantly, routinely, from, from all kinds of folks in terms of the kind of things they like, don't like, how, how we can improve, et cetera, et cetera. So early on, a long time ago, people were talking about, hey, have you thought about you know, student housing? Have you thought about student housing? You know, of course, we had a lot of things going on, so you can't do everything at once. This is a, you know, it's a large organization, so you know, we, we, we're going to get to it. Hopefully, we could. And so we, we did more and more student surveys. And the, the numbers that came back, Isidora, were, were tremendous. I'm talking students saying we oh, want yeah. dorms. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, uh, majority 
of thousands of students weighing in, which is unusual in and of itself. You don't usually get that kind of sample size. On numerous occasions, recently, uh, indicated that to us. So uh, that and you know, so and we're starting small. I mean, we're not, you know, we're starting very small, and we'll take it one day at a time. We'll get it up and running. It's another opportunity for folks to come, want to come to the college to get a different kind of experience than they would otherwise have gotten. And are these students who already live in Brevard? And, and do you have any idea why they would want to live in a dorm? Is it just because they want that college experience? I can tell you why. I can tell you why. Because that's, that's a great question. People go, well, is somebody from your area going to want to? That's exactly what's going on. That's what's happening. I, I noticed that happened at Valencia. A lot of folks want that college experience, but they're still close to kind of home. You know what I mean? It's <laughs> they just, don't want to cut the umbilical cord. I, I just, I, you know, and I wouldn't say it that way, but 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 clearly that is that is certainly there's folks who really want that experience, and I know their parents want them to have that experience. And let's be, I'm a parent. You don't want them that far away if they don't have to be. You might feel pretty comfortable about that as well. So, I think you have. I think that's that's certainly part of it. And how many students will be housed in? First one will be like 96 students. Okay, so it's, a, it's a small, it's a small start, but uh, you know we'll get that up and running, and then we'll uh, we'll see what the demand. I suspect the demand will continue to be strong, if not stronger, and we'll 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 reevaluate that at the correct time. And you also broke ground on a new student union, and there's an investment of over 74 million dollars in new construction. Can you say what's going on on? on Eastern, Eastern Florida's campus right now? Well, the 74 million is a price tag if you were to do everything, which we haven't completed yet. Mm -hmm. So that's, 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 okay. that's a, just a number that's out there. But the student union, we broke ground, I believe it was in October uh, of last year. Uh, very exciting. It's going to be the centerpiece of, of student activity. And obviously, you would want to have a student union in place before you had housing. So that the timing of that was, was obviously very fortuitous for us as well. Remember, these dollars that are there are not coming from tuition dollars. They're coming from the state appropriations that we've been able to secure through projects. So uh, that's important for people to know as well, I think. It's going to have uh, great uh, eating opportunities, study areas, student government study uh, or student government areas. And it's going to have a multi-purpose room on the second floor. It's going to be quite large. And it's going to be great not only for all the things that we do from a student perspective, but, you know, it's a great opportunity for, um, for folks to have uh, conferences, um, you, know, uh, in, you know, internal, uh, you know, things like that along those lines for our, our folks, but also for the community. We'll have this available for the community to have functions there as well. So we're trying to set it up for when people come on campus, they can go there, they can check it out. And where it's going to be located and, and the views it's going to have and whatnot, are going to be are going to be special, I think. Are so. you trying to bring any any restaurant chains? A, a lot of colleges do that. We already have we already have uh, Chick Fil A in there. So uh, and and uh, I can put it this way: they're very excited about going into the new student union because that's going to be a better opportunity even for them in terms of size and the equipment they're going to be able to have and whatnot. But uh, to the to the other uh, issue about uh, the the building boom. How much time do we have? We've got a. We've got, we, we, <laughs> we have about four minutes. <laughs> okay. So. We, well, let me let me just mention a couple of things that I think are important, and, and our community knows about some of these to a certain degree. I'm sure. You know, with the health sciences uh, building opened up. Uh, a I don't twenty know, million dollar. Building, twenty million right? dollar again. Another another appropriation from the state. We're so pleased that they were able to do that, and thank all the folks that helped help put that together. But if you've never been there before, and I would invite anybody in the community uh, who would like a tour, please come on campus. We'll be happy to arrange a tour. Go through it and see all the different specialized labs. We have, we have uh, emergency rooms that look exactly like emergency rooms. We have physical therapy areas that look like physical therapy areas. We have, uh, we have, sur we have a surgery center that you would think you're at, at one of the major hospitals going into surgery. I mean, it's unbelievable the kind of equipment we have in there. So uh, we're excited about it. I can tell you when the healthcare providers all show up for the, the dedication, as well as Florida Today, thank you very much, show up and, and are, are as enthusiastic as I am, and as you can see, I'm pretty enthusiastic. When they're as, as enthusiastic, if not more than me, that tells you something about the community and the, the, the need that's out there to, to have those kind of folks trained. So that was another building. There's, there's hopefully more in the works, and we've had others in the past. So uh, the college is, is, is being situated in such a way that, again, we're going to offer more opportunities across the board that are help our, our citizens. And one of the things you often hear um, uh, when you try to explain why there's this push in the legislature to curb the number of bachelor's degrees at state colleges is, you know, are these colleges competing with universities? I mean, my personal take is that they're, they're not because right. these are different students. Exactly. But uh, what is your take and what is the traditional um, 
Eastern Florida student today? Yeah, I mean, I, we're not competing with them. You know, their students are 18, 19 years old. Ours are, you know, 20 some years old, mid, mid, at least 20s. Um, ours are pl place bound. Those folks are going there to go to football games and to have all the other, you know, great opportunities that, that a university offers and different programs of study that are not necessarily directly workforce related, obviously, okay? And so I, they say we're competing. Some say we're competing. Uh, I, like you, I don't believe we are. And I think, the, I think the, the numbers prove it out. Even with the colleges that are gone to the baccalaureates, if you still look at the numbers of folks that are, that are transferring, they're, they're still substantial. I mean, there's a lot of folks that, are, so a certain sect of our folks will come, they want to get their two-year AA. That's still a huge amount of people that come to our place. They then want to go to Florida State. They want to go to Florida. They want to go to FAU. They want to go to FIU. They, they want to go all different places. That's part of their experience that they want too. Which I think is fantastic as well. So we can be we can be more than one type of entity to more than one student, I believe. And one of the things that was outlined in your uh, in the twenty seven review was that uh, initiatives to enroll more minority students and also to retain them. What what is going on, and how can you you know make a dent in that? Again, we we reach out to the minority communities in every regard. We have them uh, on, on we we have so many things that go on campus that are. Uh, related to the minority uh, community and uh, across the board. Um, that creates a lot of enthusiasm and you know I can tell you one thing it's working because if you look at the folks that come that are minorities that come to, to the college in terms of how they do and the proportion that you would expect based on their population we're exceeding we're exceeding what the expectation is by pretty su significant amounts and we get reviewed constantly by the state and by the federal government and I can tell you, we've uh, we've had some really, really good reviews on those kind of initiatives as well. So I feel like uh, we meet everybody where they are. We want them to be successful. We want them to be connected to us. I think it's very important when a student comes in, if they don't feel connected somehow, they're going to find a reason to not want to be there necessarily. So we have to find something that, that connects them to us and us to each other. And if that's the case, you're going to find folks succeed, uh, regardless of their backgrounds coming in, in my mind. Mm -hmm. And you still get upset upset when the, when people call you BCC. <laughs> well, I never got upset. I wouldn't say it that way, but, but uh, listen, uh, you know, Eastern Florida State College is doing well. Uh, I certainly understand folks that uh, think of BCC in a fond way. I mean, we all did, uh, but Eastern Florida State College is, is a little different than 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 its predecessor in, in a lot of ways. I think so. We're proud of where we are, and we can't. We're wait, looking forward to the future in a huge way. Dr. Ritchie, thank you so much. My pleasure. Great to see you. Our thanks to Dr. Ritchie for joining us here in the studio. Be sure to join us again next week on WEFS and on FloridaToday.com 